Greetings, everyone. This is Steam Team Read WK, CC Trainer Ling, and I'm back to bring you another episode review from Season 7 of The Loud House. But not just any episode. Today we'll be looking at the first installment of the multi-episode road trip arc. So let's get right into it. Our first road trip episode is Bizarratorium. In this episode, Rita is assigned to write a travel column for her job and takes her family on a summer-long nationwide road trip in a giant RV. Meanwhile, Lincoln makes a plan to visit the Bizarratorium on their way to Niagara Falls, but bad luck descends upon the family when he takes an ancient Egyptian ring as a souvenir after discovering his destination is closed. First and foremost, we learn at the beginning that it's officially summer vacation and all the louds are together, including our beloved Lori. However, just to make things way easier on myself, I'm not going to question whether this entire road trip arc takes place during the summer before Lincoln started middle school or after his first year of middle school. Why? Because who cares at this point? Anyway, for this being the first installment of this multi-episode arc, it was a rather unique blend of simplicity from the show's early seasons and fancy-based adventure from later seasons. In my opinion, combining those two elements together worked very well and everything balanced out evenly. Or at least there was a good transition between those two elements. Simplicity in the first act and then moving on to the fantasy in the second. The first act was very basic like something you'd see from an early episode back in seasons 1 and 2. Lincoln was the man with a plan by trying to make sure he made extra time in his mom's tight travel schedule to visit a well-known oddity museum en route to Niagara Falls. This involved him setting the clocks forward while everyone was asleep, brushing everyone out of the house the next morning, and taking advantage of his dad's drive-by pancake mishap involving someone else's car so he could shorten the bathroom line at a rest stop. Unfortunately, the museum is shut down and deserted when he finally gets there, so his plan didn't quite work out the way he had hoped. Before leaving, he stumbles upon the Royal Ring of Royalty belonging to the museum's mystic mummy of mystery and takes it for himself. This is where we transition away from down-to-earth simplicity and onto a more fantasy-based conflict. The family starts running into a series of problems no matter where they go as a dark rain cloud follows their RV. That's pretty much the entirety of the second act. Appliances in the RV start breaking down, they can't get a decent lunch, or any lunch for that matter, a tree falls on their vehicle, and they get two blown tires. It turns out Lincoln being in possession of that ancient ring is the cause of their misfortune, and Lucy says they have to make an offering to the mummy spirit so the curse can be lifted. They have to gather moss from a swamp, a flower, and a stone from inside a cave. While I consider the montage of gathering these special items and breaking the curse as my favorite part of the episode, I'll admit it was kinda head-scratching in some areas. For one, Lori noted how all the moss in the swamp looked the same, and yet the special stuff Lana found didn't look all that different from everything else. My only guess would be she was able to find the right stuff by sniffing it out, but the animators could have at least given that special moss a different shade of green, or something to make it stand out from the rest. There's also the part where the kids are in a cave looking for a special stone that's said to be both difficult to find and even more difficult to extract. Ironically, Lola just sniffed it out and cracked open the rock it was hiding in, and then simply took it and ran out before the cave collapsed. For a stone that was said to be difficult to extract, it sure didn't take a lot of struggling to get it free. I guess that was the joke they were going for because Lola is the kind of character who will do anything to get her hands on a shiny valuable, but still the writers could have made extracting the stone a tad challenging like it said in Lucy's spellbook. As far as things go with the kids trying to get their hands on a flower while fighting off the sentient and violent plant it was attached to, it was just plain wacky with shades of behavior similar to that of the Venus man traps from the Orchid Grief. So they mix their findings with Lucy's potion, she drips some of it onto the ring, she casts a spell, and the mummy lifts the curse and puts everything back to normal after taking back what is rightfully his. Say whatever you want about the fantasy elements the show has dabbled with in the post Savino era, but I can appreciate how they were used in this episode. They played true to the typical mummy curse style storyline, and these bits of fantasy didn't overshadow the slice of life aspects of the story. Anyway, another thing I can appreciate was the subtle foreshadowing Lisa and Lana set up earlier when they decided to give Camper Zilla a few upgrades to accommodate their large family. Their upgrades came in handy when they used jet boosters to get to Niagara Falls so Rita could cover the barrel race before missing her first deadline. As a side note, these jet boosters are used again in the future episode Doll Day Afternoon, so kudos to the writers for keeping some continuity regarding their upgraded RV. However, the barrel race is over by the time the family arrives, which makes you question the efficiency of those jet boosters, and Jesse Hiller is about to take Rita off the travel assignment for missing her first deadline. That's when Lincoln steps in to defend his mom by explaining how he was responsible for missing the deadline. He tells Jesse about the family situation with the mummy's curse, and this excites Miss Hiller so much that she decides to keep Rita on the job. As a bonus, Jesse throws out her original itinerary and allows Rita to go anywhere she wants to write fun, random, and bizarre adventures 
adventures with her out-of-control family. Call it a convenient ending based on far-fetched circumstances, but in the cartoon universe, would you really expect anything less? Overall, this was a great episode to kickstart the road trip arc. It had a nice, healthy balance of early season slice of life elements and later season fantasy elements, the latter not overtaking the former in any significant way. And seeing all the louts together on what appears to be their biggest adventure in the TV series was nice to see. I mostly say that because of how infrequent Lori's appearances have been since the fifth season, so being with her family for back-to-back -back episodes after technically getting snubbed in Save Royal Woods really hits in a way that makes me appreciate her character a whole lot more. The pacing of the story was pretty good for the most part, despite a few oddly convenient and rushed moments here and there. Props to Lincoln for saving both his mom's assignment and his family's summer vacation. And of course, I can't forget a few of this episode's funny visual moments. My personal favorites include Lana's head after she pulls it out of the toilet, and Mr. Grouse celebrating the fact his noisy neighbors will be away for three months. I mean, hey, can you really blame the guy? The best way I can summarize this episode is that the title Bizarratorium lives up to its name in more ways than one. Lincoln and his family got to experience the bizarre nature of the namesake museum in a way no one was expecting, and Jessie wanted Rita to write more bizarre stories based on the one her family went through. So if this was supposed to be a glimpse into the fun, random, and bizarre family adventures yet to come, this episode made a good first impression and leaves you wanting more. With that said, I give Bizarratorium an 8 out of 10. Well, folks, that concludes my review of Bizarratorium. So I gotta ask, what did you guys think of this episode? Sound off in the comments below, and be sure to click that subscribe button for more Loud House-related content. That's going to do it for me. I'll catch you guys for the next video. But until then, this is Steam Team Read WK, CC Trainer Ling, signing off. Peace out, home slices.